Last night, Cheryl Loggy made her status. Any moms out there know a good stroller for twins? Help! It got 10 likes and 8 comments. Geico also has a comment, Cheryl. While we don't know which stroller you should go with, we do know that in as little as 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance just by switching to Geico. And with that money, you can buy the swankiest of rides for your tiny duo to cruise around in. Right on down to potty training town. Hashtag twins. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. With the holidays almost here, you don't have time to go to the post office. I keep telling you guys, the traffic, the parking, old ladies mailing mini fridges to their nieces. Look, use Stamps.com instead and don't go to the post office. With Stamps.com, you can avoid all the hassles of going to the post office during the busy holiday season. And everything you would do at the post office, you can do right from your desk. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. Print postage for any letter or package the instant you need it then the mailman picks it up it's so easy it's so convenient and that's why i use stamps.com you should use it too right now get this special offer when you use my last name more no risk trial plus 110 dollar bonus offer and that includes a digital scale and up to 55 dollars free postage don't wait go to stamps.com before you do anything else click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type and more. That's stamps.com. Enter M O H R. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game tape. Donuts. If you wanna battle, it's either that you will or you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are. Blanche, you are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. Four Stories Podcast, number, I don't know what number we're in, mid-250s or so, Keith Morrison. No kidding. No kidding at all. Well, and you're still alive. Still alive. Nobody's killed you yet. No, but... Somebody could. Some, oh, go on. Maybe tonight. You never know. <laughs> uh, you are, of course, the voice of uh, Dateline, Fridays at 8 o'clock, uh, my, uh, my wife and mine's favorite show, and well, people listening are big fans of yours. I got you, you to call into my sports talk radio show. You yeah, were nice enough to do that. Well, what do you mean nice enough? It was a, it was a pleasure. It was you the best. It's an honor. And you are good on Twitter as well. It's at... Oh, yeah. It's it's at Keith underline... Uh, wait a minute. Under, date, dateline underline Keith. That's underscore. What it is. Under, is that what you call it? Yeah. Underscore? Dateline underscore... At oh, okay. dateline underscore yeah. Keith. And when but, I asked you to be on my radio show, yeah. which is sports, you actually tweeted back, what do I know of sports save murder? <laughs> well, it is a kind of a sport, don't you think? It was just great. Oh, it, yeah. it, murder... Well, yeah, in your business, it mm. certainly seems to be a yeah. bit of a sport. People seem to strategize uh, a surprise to a surprising degree it never uh, fails to amaze me how uh, how much planning goes into these uh, you wouldn't think it, it's supposed to be a crime of passion but no often what not. amazes me when people do it for the money the life insurance and it's something uh, inconsequential the light just went out in front it's of your garage security light it's oh. yes well now <laughs> all right <laughs> everything's going to be narrated from a, i'm going to get my throat slit from behind could be i have a theory that when you meet uh, Keith Morrison, <laughs> and I've actually tweeted this, if you ever meet Keith Morrison and shake his hand, you're granted everlasting life. <laughs> it would be far too bizarre. Like you it, said that? I tweeted it along, like, maybe two years ago. Wow. Because if you, if I shook your hand, it would be too bizarre for you to then be on Dateline saying, Jay Moore. Right. Mm, yeah. Like, yeah. Cause they'd have to, you'd have to uh, be uh, excused gotcha. from that yes. particular right. one. That's true. And then I'd have uh, the Mankiewicz guy doing it. <sighs> Well, he'd be a lot snarkier. 
Josh Mankiewicz is mm, more snark, mm, and you're much. more sinister? I don't know. I think I'm just warm and cuddly, mostly. But. Well, you do make it genteel, and I have said you are the Vin Scully of murder. <laughs> you did? Yeah. I've been, this is a huge get for me, Keith. I'm, you have no idea. I've jumped through four. I thought it was the other way around. Well, then it's the Mutual Admiration Society. We're both, both doing well in the uh, deportment department. Uh. Um, but you, your, your show... Dateline uh, Fridays at 8 and I know everybody listening to this are huge mm. fans of the show and you tweet and Dateline uh, mm. has their own Twitter handle and they tweet back they do but I, I think people don't realize that this is sort of like a gig you've settled into because you were you were a news anchor you did things up in uh, yeah well I uh, right that went on for a long time these uh, very, you know you can do almost anything on television uh, including get coffee and take out the garbage and uh, yeah but i mean you you covered like real i mean you weren't always saying you know something was brewing at the waffle house and it wasn't the coffee you covered the yom kippur war for crying out loud yes that's true but um i covered politics for a long time and and talked to you know people with positions and uh, authority and famous people um and they always, you know, they always knew what they were going to say when they sat down. And they always had boundaries and barriers you couldn't go past. It was always a little kind of a dance you did with people. You never got to know what was going on inside. And that's what happens on this show. You, you, you know, you, get, you, you sit down beside, I think I told you this before. You sit down in a room surrounded by lights and crews and producers sitting off to the side. And uh, you talk to a stranger you just met. And um, that person is aware that this is going to go on television and be seen by millions of people. <clears throat> and you ask them questions more intimate and more personal and more private than a member of their own family would ask them after living with them their whole lives. And they'll answer. Um, it's amazing. It's and they'll answer in a way that gets... They often lie. People off Everybody lies all the time. But enough questions and answers you sort of get to know the real person and, and your time with them especially you know people that have uh, I want to talk more about you talking to heads uh, of state and such and covering wars because that fascinates me as well mm, wow. uh, and coming from Saskatchewan of all places good you, god you, you've done some research well it's a peripheral uh, sir, I like to keep <laughs> it light and I you know I don't want to I don't yeah. want to let the facts get in the way of a mm. good time here there are you, you the most yeah. famous Saskatchewan no god no who no, is no. who is well, the, you know, I the thing I'm most proud of is that uh, I went to the same elementary school as Gordie Howe. Well, that's way up. Uh, yeah, and that's, I played hockey on the hockey rink, the outdoor rink right beside the school where he started playing hockey. It's where I started playing. So that's, I would, yeah, I'll put Gordie Howe way up. Yeah, yeah. His yeah. most famous Saskatchewanian or Saskatchewan? I don't know what the hell they call them. Saskatchewanian, I Canadians. Suppose. That too, yes. That as well. Yes. Mm. When you sit with people and your time with them uh, is very limited, and I have a bunch, I do an entire, I'd say about 15 minutes of stand-up about Dateline. Uh, Dateline Good uh, uh, God. Well, it's fascinating because it's, you have all the, the workings of the perfect, mm. uh, not jokes, but like routine. It's First of all, everyone in the audience has seen it. Uh-huh. Secondly, you point out things. My wife actually wrote the, the entire run, and I just perform it. <laughs> um, when you get murdered, yeah. well, people suddenly come out of the woodwork and say the nicest things about you. Yes. You could have been the biggest bitch, hell on wheels, oh, yeah. awful man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they say two things that you've heard probably 100 times. The first thing they always say is, she lit up a room. <sighs> Yes, they all lit up rooms. You're right. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Keep smiling right now. It's, it is the precursor to uh-huh. getting mur- your your number one line on your resume. If your husband's going to put a, a happy face where your throat used to be, it's you must be a room lighter upper. Good. A happy face where your throat. I like that. Like I like that, that line. Yeah. Ear to ear. No, I'm just wondering if I could. 
If I get you, is that your line? Oh no, you yeah. carte blanche for you, my Thank friend. You. Thank you. They always say she lit up a room. Yeah. And uh, to which I call bullshit on because uh, you know Dalai Lama lights up a room alive. Yeah, true. Cindy Crawford. True. Yeah. You see her, you go, wow, she really lights up a room alive. Yeah. But also, I'm supposed to believe that Patty, who's like a six tops, I saw her wedding video. She's got a crooked mm. tooth and crunchy bangs. I don't think she really lit up a room. I think mm. you're kind of embellishing just to Could be on be. television. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes back to your point, Keith Moore. Uh Uh, at dateline underscore Keith (laughs) you're gonna get a lot of tweets you're gonna like it it's a passionate bunch that people will lie and they'll say the strangest things even a man accused of murder uh, trial pending and I think it goes back to um, uh, the movie uh, Requiem for a Dream where she says I just want to be on television like people just to be on television yeah even at the risk of incriminating themselves well there is a little of that yeah hmm it's the oddest damn thing, actually. And occasionally, I mean, you know how it is. People lie to themselves more than to anybody else. So uh, I remember at one time talking to a preacher who had uh, decided during the course of his uh, preaching career that uh, a man should have more than one wife. But not that uncommon in the religion, in some religions. It was uncommon in his. But anyway, he so he married a junior wife. Um, and things were fine for a couple of years, and then he, he tired of her. And so he sent the senior wife and the kids off for a weekend in Santa Barbara, and um, he took the junior wife out for a nice steak dinner, and then he took her home, and he killed her. And he not only uh, killed her, but then he cut her up into little bits with a saw. He did this in his bathtub so it wouldn't make too much of a mess. And then he put her into a couple of Tupperware containers, and put those into the back of a rented uh, of an Escalade he had rented, and he drove it out into the Arizona desert, and uh, he buried it under some stones, and went back into town and, and was preaching the next Sunday. So eventually, it took them a long time to catch this guy, but they eventually did, and they they got the story out of him, and they convicted him, and uh, he's in prison for life. So I asked him. You know, I, I, I'm kind of interested in religion, and I asked him some questions based on his belief and, you know, how, how he could still believe he was going to be going to heaven after doing a thing like that, and he explained to me why that would be so, and said, but, you know, the best part of it is she'll be there waiting for me, and we'll be together again. Wow. I said, you, you cut her into little bits. You think she's going to want to be with you again? Oh, yes, for sure. I love the things that people tell themselves more than anything. And told you and a national audience, too. Well, yes. I, yeah, yeah. Do you, how, there's got to be times where you're sitting across from a guy, and the moment you walk into the room, you get piss shivers up your spine, and you know you're in the presence of evil, mm. and there's no... But not that, that or, often. Or it, has that ever happened? Yes, it has. Where you go, whoa. Like, before yeah. you even sit down, you right. go, whoa, whoa there's whoa. a vibe in this room, bro. Yeah. Really? But only once or twice, really. Really? Yeah. How many have you done? How many... S- How many datelines have you done where you oh, sat down God. with these uh, men that have murdered their wives that lit up a room? <laughs> 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 Not always just their wives, you know. Um, the men don't light up rooms, the men victims. No, as, they as never often, say no. that. They always say uh, no one had anything bad to say about him. And I exactly. say on stage, well, uh-huh. by my math, there's one lady. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm rounding up. Uh, yeah, that's One clear. lady uh-huh. that had so many bad things to say about him. Words weren't getting the point across. She needed the woods and time to fully express herself. So how many how many times have you sat down with um with uh, oh, thousands. Thousands? Yeah. And does any of that rub off on you? Do you ever go home and put your head on your pillow and you can't sleep because you realize like that, I mean you, you're know, you job, think, you're you a think, strange right? job. It's an Keith odd Morrison. job, but you narrate murder. I know. Uh, I should feel terrible about you used this. To, you asked you used to ask uh, you know Prime Minister Mulroney questions or, uh-huh, or uh, you know you used to talk about sure. uh, President Nixon please over here in the corner. Yeah. And now you're just asking guys why'd you put your wife into Tupperware bits and better in, put I, her in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. 
far more interesting. Did you audition for this job? No, no. I think I got fired from some other job, and so, you know, they... I, you did. I know you what know, uh, job. You know that already. CBC. You called the Prime <laughs> Minister. What's his name on camera? Oh, no. that was Well, that was the other network. So you were off by just a little bit. It's, it's still pretty damn impressive. I mean, who well, cares about no. Saskatchewan television? Come on. You know, it was meant with love and respect, but the guy was going to be on our show the next day. It was a morning show I was doing. And it was the Prime Minister? It was a Prime Minister, and he was retiring. And so, uh, because everybody knew who he was, um, I just said, to, you know, to be sure to tune in tomorrow morning when old What's-His-Name joins us for a kind of a goodbye chat. On camera. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I but, don't think that's a fireball no, offense no. by any means. I, and well, I thought Canadians are a little more laid back than us. Well, I, I, I would have thought, but there you are. And did you have a meeting? Like, did they call you up to Human Resources and say, we're letting you go? Because no, what happened was, I uh, they don't tell you what they're doing. And um, so I was... Remember John Sununu? Yeah, of course. He was visiting uh, in the country up there north of us. Uh, he was a New Hampshire uh, son? He was a New Hampshire guy, yeah. And he was, uh, he was in Toronto where we did our morning show. And he had a meeting there or something. So he agreed to an interview. And I went to see him in his hotel room. And I was in the middle of the interview when I was called aside and, and, and told that, you know, there's an important meeting at, at the office, at the, our main our headquarters. And I should get over there as quickly as possible. I thought it was odd, but uh, so I did and, and walked into the room of the president of the network. And um, it just seemed sort of cold in the room. And speaking of, you know, feeling cold in somebody's presence, it felt cold. And <laughs> he told me I was fired. But, you know, it's one of those getting escorted out. And you can't go back to your office. And really? Yeah, it was some old deal. school. Like you got to get yeah. all your belongings off your desk. Right. So then it appears in the newspaper and various magazines the next few days. And they've got their story out there. I went to see, I'm <laughs> telling you tales out of school, but I couldn't say anything because, uh, you know, it gets in the way of all potential legal proceedings. But oh, anyway, legally, you couldn't why. say anything. That's yeah. what, that you, I right. don't think you're speaking out of school. Legally, there's things yes. going on. You probably signed an That's agreement right. saying, I won't. Why did I start telling you about that? Because I, I asked know. you about you. Uh, See getting, what happened? saying good old what's-his-name. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Good old what's-his-name. I'd sort of forgotten about that. Um, so there's been only two or three times you've said to me, Keith, that you've walked into a room, and before you even sat across from the person, usually oh. a man, uh, you've went, whoa, it's a weird thing. And that's right. that's got to be a strange feeling because you're it's we're all innocent until presu- until uh, proven uh, right. guilty. But right. you walk into a room and realize there's, there's there's something coming off of this human being. There's some energy that's making me uncomfortable. And I haven't even spoken to the person yet. Right. It right. kind of makes you like a, a believer in energies, maybe in uh, frequencies and whatnot, if they can make you creeped out before you meet them. I don't know. Maybe maybe we just do it to ourselves. You could say no. You could disagree with me. It's fine. Uh, well, I think I am. I'm trying to politely disagree with you. I know. Right? Okay. Sorry. I just want you to disagree with me. Uh, come across the table, smash me in the head with that <laughs> with that bottle. Yeah. Uh, Keith, this is a good thing. Uh, on my website, jmore.com, there's an Amazon banner. And with the holidays coming up, if you're going to shop at Amazon, don't go to Amazon. Take go it to your, you. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner. All that money that I get, like a 1% kickback, it costs the listener nothing. It's regular. Amazon just wants to know they got there through my website. And I You're get kidding it. about this, right? No, right here. I'll show you. I'm going to read an email from a former Secret Service agent. Unbe- How did you get that deal? Uh, a lot. Most podcasts actually have it. No kidding. So if you want to give uh, Bill Burr uh, money to just snort up his nose or Adam Carolla more money to uh, for his drug habit, that's what what, are you or I can put my kids through college. This there goes go. direct deposit to a college fund for my uh, my three-year-old son. No, and to God. No joke. And okay. I am a religious man, my friend. Really? I'm a St. Monican Catholic right down the mm, street here. Mm, so mm. Uh, go to uh, jmore.com if you're shopping at Amazon, like my friend Jason Russell, who writes, Keith. Uh, AJ, I ordered some heart rate monitors on Amazon by clicking through jmore.com, the banner on your site. I didn't order them for the normal reason you would oh. think. I'm a former U.S. Secret Service agent, and I have a business training school and child cares how to respond to critical incidents. These monitors will allow me to demonstrate to them the effect that high heart rates have unfunctioning during 
during critical incidents, you just had science happen in your face, he writes. Wow. And then he continues. So you're saving the world and making money at the same time. Uh, well, my son's college. I, I won't, if my sons decide not oh. to go to college, I will become uh, a, 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 a thousandaire. <laughs> anyway, I enjoy your podcast, and I like the show Gary Unmarried. Apparently, I must have been the only one that liked it. Check out my website while you're bored <laughs> or on a plane with Wi-Fi. Don't hesitate to hype up my business on your podcast. Happy to come train schools anywhere in the country. Keep up the good work. Jason Russell, president and CEO. I'll give you the plug, bro. SecureEd.com. Secure Environment huh. uh, Consultant. SecureEd.com. So, Jason Russell, there you have it. You just got to... Hey, Ke- How uh, many people have done this? Uh, we've gone through you. <clears throat> oh, you know, hundreds Lots. a week. Yeah, wow. that's good. And uh, mm. it doesn't... You know, you're going there anyway. You go but to my website. The thing good old what's-his-name, and uh, we'll... Good old what's-his-name. Get name. whatever we want if we look him up. It's yeah. amazing. Of all the times yeah. you sat in a room with hinky people... Uh, uh, the one time it was your own, uh, it was your own professional murder. Right. Yeah. That's the one time uh, you vibed true. it out. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, you you you've sat across thousands of men. That uh, it's usually the wife. I would say on the show, seventy percent. Well, yeah, often. Yeah, often. You could have just said yes. No, because here. <laughs> <laughs> because we want people to think maybe it could be somebody else. Oh, red herring. Ah. Here's the thing: like thirty percent of the time, the guy murders his wife. I go the other Sometimes way. Sometimes the wife murders the husband. Yeah, and it's always a man of power. I've noticed it's always a sheriff or a judge, mm. and it's always his own weapon. And the wife. You know what disturbs me, Keith Morrison? What, what does? What, what? What? When they do? use your nine one one call against you in court. That scares now, the shit out of me. Now, why does that disturb me. you? Because they either say you're too crazy and you're acting, or, or you're, you're not, not showing enough, enough emotion. Yeah. Because mm, uh-huh. if I walk upstairs and my wife is no longer uh, with us, first thing I'm getting out is my address. Yeah. In case anything else happens, I get the address out, mm. and I want to give. I, I would assume this is how I would behave. I, of course, I would be an hysteric. But then they play it in court and go. Well, you don't it sounds want to kind of hysterical, though. No. Just the right amount of hysterical. See, oh, you see, there's a whole system, really. Yeah. Y- yeah, and and you see the people who are trying to use the system to to get away with it, and sometimes they succeed. The 911 call people. That well, it, that's just one element. It's one chapter of the story to tell. But you don't think that's unfair to use against somebody in court, that their emotional state at the time they made a 911 call? I think it's totally unfair, but it's oh, okay. yes. uh, part of the way things work. Let me ask you this. I know you're not a uh, lawyer. I know you're not a policeman or a judge, but you uh, you deal with uh, right. these uh, the nefarious characters. Uh-huh. I never understood why, if you agree to a lie detector test and they can uh, th- they can't use it in court. I know it, it just seems odd that the police would say, "Well, he right. turned down the lie detector." Well, mm. even if I agree to it and fail, you can't use it against me in court. No, so, is it admissible? It's it's a it's a tool to scare people into confessing, mostly. If I gave you a lie detector test, uh-huh. and do you think you uh, have learned enough along your travels with uh, murderers uh, that you could actually pass it? Could you look me in the eye? No, I couldn't pass it. You don't I, think so? No, no, no. I think I could. You Well, you probably could. Because the first question— You look sort of like a sociopath, so maybe— Well, I've, you know. John Ronson's uh, The Psychopath uh-huh. Test is a great collection of, short, of uh, right. essays about you know what yeah. makes a psychopath. And I realized, well, entertainment, show business, egomaniac, yeah. uh-huh, yeah. Uh, addiction. Depression, swinging all mania, all of it. Yeah. But I use my powers for good. I walk in the light, my friend. I light up a room. <laughs> I, I'm so excited about that Amazon thing. I, I can barely speak. <clears throat> well, yeah. next time you shop on Amazon, you should go to jmore.com. And I'll tell my there. wife. Yeah. Yeah. You can see clips of my stand up and you can see where I'm performing in a town near you. Next time I'm in Irvine, you better be there, my friend. I, I will, will go, uh, text you sure. and yeah. let you know. I mean, I don't think you're going to go January 24th to the Turning Stone Casino in Verona, New York. That's probably a long, <laughs> that's probably a long hustle for you, right? Well, no, I go there all the time. All right. Well, we'll go together. Oh, good idea. On the Dateline jet. Yeah. <laughs> the Dateline jet, yeah. And just hope the pilots don't get murdered. Uh. Um, I think I could pass a lie detector test because I have a, my, my birth name is, the first question they always ask you is, is your name Keith Morrison? Yes, all right. So I'll, I'll ask I, you, is your name I, Keith Morrison? I believe it is. Yeah. Well, you would ask, yes or no, please. I, well. Oh. <laughs> is your name Keith Morrison? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So you pass, but if you ask me the same question. 
Is your name Jay Moore? Yes, but already in my head, I was born John Moore, and I, I changed see. it, so already there's a hiccup. Uh, I'm out yeah. of the gate being right. elusive. I saw the little blink, by the way. The little blink? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought I was crying, actually. <laughs> so I'm so happy. Yeah. When you, when you were in, so you don't, you don't audition to become the voice of uh, these, 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 uh, these shows. It's no. just sort of something you fell into. Like you, well, no, here's what happened. I, 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 you got lucky, because Chris Hansen fell into like uh, child molesters. Yeah, you fell that's into right. I think you got the easier game. I got the better one, yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, that was... That's a bat. One of a sheet right over there. Yeah. So how do you get this gig? It's fascinating to me. Well, what happened was it was a it was just like any other uh, uh, magazine show, current affairs kind of show. And I mean, I used to like doing stories about animals. I did a story about Free Willy. I did three stories about Free Willy. All right. We was followed free... him, uh, you know, from the time he was in the Mexican pool um, up through the very last part of his very sad last part of his life. Anyway, we did that. Kind what do you? Of stuff. What do you mean, anyway? This is like the most interesting thing uh, about you that I've learned to date. I, I thought I was fascinated by you, but oh, no, Keith right. Morris in The Voice of Dateline did three separate stories on, on, a, Free Willy, uh, yeah. on a killer whale named Free Willy that they yeah. made a beautiful, heartfelt mm-hmm. movie about. Yeah. What, what was, who were you working for? When? What, what is well, this? it was a Dateline story. It was several Dateline stories. About a whale. Yeah. But we did that sort of thing. That's biting it? journalism, Keith. It, it, absolutely. You're sitting with John Sununu in a hotel room, and then you go, i got to get back to the, uh, the, to the tank down there and talk to a whale. Way more interesting than politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell if they're lying when you speak? They don't. I guess they never lie. Whales then. hardly ever lie. No. Never. No. I've learned that. Yeah. Yeah. In same with wolves. They're the same thing. Same. Wolves don't lie. Yeah, your dog probably doesn't lie. No, she lies. She'll tell Does me she? she hasn't eaten. Uh-huh. That's why she weighs all of three pounds. <laughs> so you're doing these free will. Uh, right. And that's what you enjoyed. Yes. But then uh, they realized that murder mysteries uh, are really interesting and people like to watch them. So, our, you know, not to make it sound too commercial, but that's what people are interested in. So who are we to tell them we're not going to do it? I, you and got, once we started, uh, I sort of was dragged into it a little bit, but I dragged realized, out. well, told that's what we will do. <laughs> that's As an employee of NBC? That's right. Because sure. you were a news anchor. Oh, yes. In and Los Angeles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. You got to loosen up a little. I feel like you're loosen me- up. I feel like you're measuring your answers very carefully, like the politicians. Yeah. Don't you get that, Corey? A little vibe? A little, little bit. Really? You, you too. Said, you said, I don't want to speak out of school here. And you it basically... And then the, spoke out of school. No, the message was I couldn't talk about it for legal re- reasons. Well, that's I, not speaking I, out of school. I, that's what happened. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, Jesus Christ, Morris. Well, for, I don't... What, I don't uh, what. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, da- yeah. you're working for NBC. How do you go from reading a teleprompter about the news to being, um, as you said, dragged into murder mystery? Well, the, the teleprompter about the news, if you want to, if, if, if it may, um, uh, uh, I was working at the CBC in Canada before that, covering politics, doing political documentaries, and and then going off, as you said, to the Yom Kippur War in the Middle East and um, and various other things like that, um, Southeast Asia. So I was a reporter doing mostly long-form stuff for a long time, um, and then... I got a call from KNBC in Los Angeles one day out of the blue, and they asked if I wanted to go work there. And I thought, what an interesting thing that would be to do for a year or so uh, for somebody who's getting sort of tired of doing the same thing. And uh, that's a funny way to put it. It wasn't really tired. I don't know what. Wanted to leave the CBC for a little while. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's how I ended up doing that. And how long did you do it for? <clears throat> Choke to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, nice, huh? Uh, how long did I do that? I did that from 86 through 92, so about six years. And you had like a one-year thing in your head of like, oh, I'll just do this for a little bit and turn yeah, out yeah, yeah. wildly successful, right. and you were damn good at it. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, you hung around. They wouldn't keep yeah. you at the desk if there was That's uh, true. Uh, yeah. uh, That's you know, true. somebody yeah. waiting to take your spot uh-huh. named uh, Mohammed Sanchez. Or whatever. A woman named Mohammed Sanchez. Yeah. You're out. That, I'd hire her in an instant. I would as well. Yeah. Um, 
the Yom Kippur War. Were you at? You were there. Yes, yes. It I was, never understood. That was a long time ago. Why it makes it more news? That, like if something breaks out and you know uh. Syria or the Gaza Strip, you get Keith Morrison on the phone and say, "Hey, we need you to get on a jet uh, right away. We need you on the ground uh, in the Golan Heights uh, to cover this." Because it just because you, I, I always fear for the reporters' safety, and I always think, well, why not just put a map of uh, Israel behind the guy and have him stand next to the desk? That makes a lot of sense, actually. Why, yeah. why do people have to go I to Liberia I think they're risk crazy. death? Yeah, they're nuts. That's why. They're crazy. And when you were there— These people who do that are crazy. I went there. I did that for, you know, five minutes. That's enough for me. Yeah, but I in just, those five minutes, your life was actually in danger. It was well, all— Well, no, but I mean— There was 11 really. participants, for crying out loud. It was, wasn't really a tidy affair. Yeah, you know, no, it, was, it wasn't, but, you know— you don't get all that close to the bombs going on. You go to the Four Seasons and watch it on TV with your feet Well, up. you go back there every night. Yeah. Room service. I'd yeah. like a gin and tonic and uh-huh. a plate of chips. I want to watch myself. Yeah. It, 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 in Vietnam, they, it, it, it's, the reporters would get in the back seat of a, not all of them, but a lot of them. You get in the back seat of a, of a chauffeur-driven Mercedes, and they get driven out to the front where these poor slobs are lying around in the, in the swamps trying to you know, pick off whoever they can, spend the day there, uh, and then go back to the hotel at night where they might have, you know... Uh, uh, a fairly good social life. So it's a it's another uh, back in the day even a media illusion. Yeah. Well, uh, the manipulation uh, of uh, the message. This guy's on the ground. We have a guy there. This, there was, our there news was a, team. There was is, some of that going our on. Our news yeah. team is so incredible. He's on the ground, boots on the ground, dirt right. under the nails. Right. And then by the time you're watching it in uh, Southern California, he's at a Four Seasons with a, a young Thai boy. <laughs> My words, not yours. Your words, not mine, yeah. Um, so you, you do the Dateline shows, mm. which are, it is actually my favorite show, and we watch all of them. I, but, I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you, that's the reason you're Friday at 8, cent, 7 Central. Huh? Friday at 8, 7 Central, <laughs> Mountain, and uh, uh, right. you're, you're on your own. The rest uh-huh. of the, I always wonder why they always go, and you probably had to say it your whole life, like 8 o'clock, uh, 7 Central. They never go like, and that's 8 Mountain, just so you know, we switch back. Only the Central Time Zone gets their special disclaimer for time. I like, know. Like it, it's never seemed right are to going, me. When is it on for me? Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. But why would they watch at 7? 7 seems too early for Dateline. It is too early. It's yeah. too early for anything. I'm giving mm-hmm. kid a bath at 7 o'clock. No, no. Not even mine. Right. Just kids in the neighborhood. I round them up and I give them all baths. Your they little dog me. is licking my hand. She likes you. That's little Mabel. She's on the... Uh, Mabel is very cute. She's a good little girl. Mm-hmm. She's a nice pup. Do you have any dogs, Keith? I have a dog, yes. What kind of dog do you have? It's a golden doodle. Quite a large dog, actually. Golden doodles are big. What's your dog's name? Let's make him famous. His name is Jasper. Jasper. Jasper, yes. Jasper's a good dog. He's a, kind of like a puppy, even though he's old. One of those big dogs that think they're lap dogs? Yeah, kind of like that. Always wants to cuddle up to you. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, when you uh, – do they film most of the datelines? Uh, you you have to go to these places where the thing happened. Well, yes. I mean, obviously, because sure, if the person's yeah. incarcerated, you have to go see them. You bet. So you are actually, Keith, uh, not that guy uh, manipulating the media that I stated earlier. You you actually have to go to a jail and sit across from a guy, and you can – the reveal uh, is they only shoot the guy from the neck up to hide the uh, – Prison jumps. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In cases where but that person is actually guilty sometimes, of course, they're not. But Has there been a case, and there, you said thousands, but I would guess if I had your job, uh, there'd be a couple cases that are a little hard to shake off. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Any in particular come into mind? Oh, well, you know, uh, lots of them, actually. Sure, lots of them are. As long as you're specific, that's fine. Yeah, I know you want a specific... Um, but... <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. Maybe the, you um, know. The, maybe it's always the last one, whatever it was. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They all, that's, the, yeah. do, do you think? It's always the one you're working on. It's Does it take fabulous. a toll on you? 
No, no. it's an energizing thing. It's wonderful. I know, but there's there's dead people involved and sinister things and mis- yeah, mysterious but, noises. Uh, and uh, yeah, everybody dies at one time or another. And that doesn't. You're able to just close the door behind you and go. That's just my day at the office. And I'm, I mean, that fascinates. No, me. I mean, you really uh, you you feel for the people involved a lot. I mean, uh, I I'm telling you, I have sat across from somebody I've just met and talk about their dead husband or wife or something. I'm and you find yourself weeping along with them, of course. It's, um, but the thing, what, here's the, here's the deal of it. People let you inside and, um, and that's incredibly, uh, honoring. Uh, it, I mean, you, you feel as if you're in church in a way, somebody's let you into their soul and it, uh, so you go home at night. Yeah. You think about it a lot, but it's not depressing. It's, um, I can't believe that person was so open enough to let me inside and let me feel what they felt. And uh, I'm honored. Do you there must be instances where right before you ask a question and maybe it's been prepared 48 hours or uh, 14 days in advance. You think to yourself when you're in front of the person in that moment, Mm -hmm. this is way over the line. This is really a personal question. But I have to ask, did you even the question, did you kill your wife? Did you kill Mm -hmm. your husband? Sort of has to be asked every single episode. Well, you know, it does, but it doesn't. Because, of course, the people who actually did do the killing or are suspected of it are not going to tell you. I mean. That's one thing they'll lie about. I, um, that's a question that always it, you're always supposed to ask it, and I never do. And and part of the reason Mankiewicz always does. Mankiewicz, well, that he hack. does everything. He does everything right. That Mankiewicz. <laughs> um, I used to cover politics, and, and Pierre Trudeau was the Prime Minister of Canada during part of that time, and uh, he uh, did not like the press, and they did not like him. Well, his, his wife may or may not have been catting around with the Rolling Stones. He uh, had his hands full. What do you mean, may or may not have been? Why well, she was. Um, anyway. I mean, what are he, a couple photographs, you know? Yeah. I, I, it's multiple stones is what impressed exactly. me, Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Trudeau. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, he uh, found it amusing when reporters would ask a question that they knew they were going to get a no answer or, or simply no answer to. And uh, so he had this little shtick he would do where if somebody would ask one of those questions, instead of saying, you know, denying it or saying, no, my government is not going to do that or this or that or the other, he'd say, yes. Keith, I'm so glad you asked. I've been denying that for years. But now that you asked me that question, I'm going to tell you the truth. So, uh... It, it stuck with me. It, it kind of makes him like a, a media darling, I would think. You would look forward to it, just hoping he would be the one to lay yeah. that on you yeah. in particular. <laughs> uh, quick commercials coming right back. I got really good questions for Keith Morrison. I hope so. <laughs> Keith, when I watch Dateline with my wife every single Friday night at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Thank Central. Thank God for you, really. It, I'm not, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you realize, I, I don't know if you're this uh, a humble a guy. I, I've known you, uh, what, 40 minutes. At least. But you yeah. do, uh, you do seem, I, I don't know if you fully understand how famously popular oh, and how. Get out of here. No, no, no. I, you really, I mean, your show <laughs> is, people are obsessed. When I'm on stage and I go, and then there's a hole on the uh-huh. TiVo, just Dateline. Uh, murder mystery show. the crowd just starts la- like it's their home too well, well, are you so really glad. unaware of this I mean they don't no, bring you- look I, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I don't believe it but I'm glad you know you really don't believe it well, you think I'm lying I mean I, I go around I the don't country know, are telling, you? I tell jokes for money and if I if yeah. they don't laugh I, I'd be a fool to keep banging my head against the same wall that's true yeah yeah well <clears throat> I guess so. Uh, When I drive, I want excitement behind the wheel. That's why I choose Shell V Power Premium Gasoline, and I experience a drive that comes alive. Shell V Power removes an average of 60% of performance robbing gunk on intake valves left by low-quality premium gasolines. Hey, man, I drive a lot for a living. I can't have gunk in my engine. That's why I got that Shell V Power Premium, baby. 
Starts with your very first tank. Now you can save big on Shell Fuels. Just sign up free for the Fuel Rewards Network program and receive at least three cents per gallon instantly on every single fill-up. For a full offer and details, visit FuelRewards.com. This morning, Sandra Sneed wrote a joyful status. This miss is a soon-to-be missus. Over 300 friends liked her engagement post, and it got 76 comments. Sandra, you're one popular gal. Geico also has a comment on your status. Did you know you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance in just 15 minutes by switching to Geico? Just the way we're trying to help cushion a nice little nest egg for the future missus. Hashtag getting hitched. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There's something for everybody at Teleflora.com when you send festive flowers from Teleflora's exclusive homemade for the holidays collection. For the cook in your life, there's Teleflora's Holly Days centerpiece. The vase doubles as a festive serving bowl. We can all use that for your favorite baker. Send Teleflora's gingerbread cookie jar bouquet, a perfect way to house holiday cookies. And for the merrymaker, Teleflora's merry mug bouquet has a mug with matching spoon, perfect for cocoa. For you, there's 15 Dollars off when you use the coupon code MORE, M O H R, at teleflora.com. T E L E Flora, F L O R A, teleflora.com. Be sure and enter Teleflora's homemade for the holiday sweepstakes to win a trip to New York City and meet the cake boss, Buddy Velastro, or hundreds of other great prizes. Beautiful, fresh holiday bouquets, always hand arranged, always hand delivered. There's something for everybody now at teleflora.com. Coupon code MORE. Uh, you re- I really get the vibe that you're just not really dialed into how f- famous and, f- well, what's the word? I'm, how popular this show is. Obsessive. Th- I mean, Dateline were brilliant when they opened up their own Twitter account and asked listeners. Yeah. Or, uh, well, that was good. That, and, uh, they tweet us yeah. who you think did it, and during the show it'll right. say, do you believe what he said, and stuff like that. There's a, there's a woman who's in charge of that sort of thing at Dateline who uh, does an awful lot of that kind of stuff, who is um, a very, very interesting woman. Woman who has a bubble around her. Uh, she'll hate me for saying this, of course, but she's just one of the most wonderful people you ever meet, as long as you stay at least two or three feet away from her. <laughs> she doesn't like personal space being intruded upon. <laughs> personal space is very important. So I like to intrude on it as often as I possibly You get real can. close after yeah. you eat onions uh, and just yeah. say words. As Bill Cosby would say, oh, words with a lot of H's in them. Uh, Hi, I'm Harold. That's right. People that eat onions always have H's in their sure. sentences. Can I spit on your shoulder? Sure. Yeah. So she's in charge of the social media at Dateline? Well, she's doing she a does great a job. lot of it, yes. Well, yeah. God bless her. Oh, yeah. Do you write your own copy? Yes. Uh, that's um, that's insane. What? Well, I, here's the way it works. Let, it, Can I tell you why it's yeah. insane? Why? Because not only do you have to write linearly from where we start, where we're going, who got killed, who was called, huh. who we thought it might be. These are the other suspects. Then back to the police. Then we actually have somebody. And then we realize that this person, now we're going to interview the person. They give them a chance to speak for themselves. That's just the linear writing, huh. which would take days to accomplish. But you always have... Um, like the most sinister sort of way of going about uh, texturing and layering mm. the copy in a Tony suburb where nobody locked their door. Mm-hmm. Something was brewing at the local Waffle House, and it wasn't well, the golf. Yeah, it's very kind of you. The, uh, it, but I work with some really, really talented people who, uh, with without whose efforts, I would be uh, it would take like ten times longer to so, get into the. So yeah. there's help. So there's other okay. Uh, that's, yeah, it's more than help. I, mean, I I like to think I help them a little bit once in a while, but mostly it's... Well, you got to deliver it, so I have to think it has to be written yeah. in your voice. Well, this is it, yeah. But I do the writing in my voice. They, uh, you know, it's a collaboration. I, I'm not... It's a lot of writing. I mean, just... To, I mean, if you write like a, a sitcom, it's, you know, you uh, have a cold open, act one, it's... Uh, there's a misunderstanding. The wife thought he said this and that. Then you go to a commercial, and then there's a B story. But you guys have to, like, bring... The entire uh, national television audience, I'm sure international, for Dateline uh, on on Friday nights at 8 o'clock, 7 Central. (laughs) And you have to bring millions of people. It's 8 o'clock. Did you know that? I did on Friday nights. Uh You have to bring millions of people up to speed. And there's a lot of moving parts. There's sheriffs. There's DAs. There's prosecutors. There's defense attorneys. One guy gets fired. They bring new people in. And you have to keep kind of resetting. And there's a lot of exposition to write. A lot of resetting. It's very difficult, in my experience, to pull off. 
off and you you guys seem to use guys i'm from new jersey uh-huh. you guys seem to uh pull it off very quickly and uh, deftly and uh it's really an incredible team well speak. yes they're they're really good at it and uh, yeah i'm along for the ride frankly i'm the visiting pastor <laughs> all these people do the hard work and i just sort of go and visit them yeah which Politician? Did you ever get to interview uh, or ask questions of uh, American presidents, sitting American presidents? Uh, I got to cover them, but it's really hard to ask questions of them. Of course, you have to be, you know, you have to be the star in whatever organization you're in to be given the honor to ask the question. And it seems like once you're in that room uh-huh. in the West Wing, they they never, you never really get bound. Like Sam Donaldson was in there until he grew Spock ears. They never uh-huh. really, and like Matt, you know, yeah, Albright. Like they, they, there's never like a 22 year old guy like. Hey, uh, you know, President Obama, so-and-so, Cornell University, quick question. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, so you'd be the guy matter. outside the White I'd House. I'd be the one standing on the fringe saying, eh, yeah. This is, what ha- this is what I heard just happen in there. Yeah, that pretty much, yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Who was your most, who, who's a politician that you sat across from that blew you away with their smarts and you thought, if only it wasn't for the system in place, this person might actually uh, change the entire country? Gorbachev. Yeah. Unbelievable guy. Um, and uh, smart as a whip and um, exactly the person who I think could have made the world a lot better place. But, you know, a couple of missteps. And uh, Well, the Politburo, too, never goes away. Don't they do, in your experiences, a, a guy like uh, with Glasnost and uh, a guy like Gorbachev who has these great reform yeah. ideas? Isn't you please educate me on this? Isn't the Politburo in Russia still in place to sort of rein him well, back in? Uh, it's kind no, of like I, a mob I, I, looking uh, over your shoulder in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe more these days with the one they've got. But uh, then, of course, uh, he, he he was kind of superseded by events and got got ousted. Yeah. But um, but when he was when he got Glasnost and when he figured out he was going to ride this tiger and try to make it all the way through, uh, it was an amazing piece of work. Uh, and then afterwards, when he consented to do interviews with reporters around the world, me included. Uh, and he talked about that time. It was just, a, it was remarkable how perceptive he was, um, not only about what was going on in his country, but around the world and relations with other countries. I mean, it was just really interesting. Yeah, that's... that's he actually gave more than most do. Uh, and maybe it was because he was out of office by then. I don't know. But, all, well, I think that's also incongruous to where he came from, too, to come from the Soviet Union. Yeah. Be, be the most forthcoming guy. Right, right. It's uh, Maybe that's why it blew you away so much. Because when you said Gorbachev, I went, oh, that huh? makes sense. Yeah. And I went, no, not really. I mean, uh, he came from... So yeah. he, uh, you think he really could have pulled it all together? Well, yeah, he was just quite a guy. Is there any hope in politics? Is there ever going to be a guy that can crack through the two-party system here in the States and really do anything? It sure looks stuck, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. My father-in-law asked me this question. He uh, has a job I'll tell you about off mic because I've been well, okay, instructed by people. Don't say that anymore publicly, please. Oh, really? Yeah. What was that? Well, what did you rocket, say that got you involved? Well, he's a rocket scientist. There you are. But there's things that go along with that job that uh, I see. I was told from an anonymous email, please stop saying that. Doesn't murder anybody, does he? Uh, no. No, okay, no. fine. Yeah. He, uh, I'm making him sound like a spy or something, but he's not. He's a brilliant man. He's a rocket scientist. Uh-huh. And he asked me, what do you think would happen if Congress uh, just didn't go to work for one calendar year? What would change? And I thought about it, and I realized absolutely nothing. Nothing, yeah. Nothing would change. Nothing. If no senator, no congressman, if, they, if it was just an empty hall, and when they opened the doors, fucking bats flew out. Yeah. You would be exactly where you are today. Exactly. Maybe and better. Maybe better. Maybe better. Yeah. But it is like this bat shit crazy. Uh, uh, two bats. It's two completely sentences. Nuts. I'm on fire yeah. with the bat references. Well, they're good references. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. like this in crazy like built when it's set up the three party. Uh, excuse me. The uh, the the three branches of government. In theory, you know, it's going back. Uh, I would love to talk politics with you. Well, the uh, reason. Fine. The, the I'll reason, not t- say anything about it, but I, I like to listen. Well, you the know? reason socialism will never work is because there's human beings involved you know that uh, old expression mm. and the reason the three three yeah. branches of government uh, won't work is because again human, human e- beings, everything yeah. on paper seems fantastic sure. yeah. but these guys just seem it's it's a yeah. 
You it's were depressing. Gonna, you were almost going to say a bitch. You were almost going to swear. I was going to, yeah, yeah. I do swear occasionally, but microphones in your face, you know, you just... Well, in your line of work, I would yeah. hate for you to be yeah, like, you know, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Right. Shithole. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't need swears rattling around yeah. in your frontal no, lobe no, in, in your line of work. No, no, it's not a good thing. And yet no. you're able to do this all the time. Yeah, I have the on-off switch. I, You know, when you're a comic, you do these uh, corporate gigs. Uh-huh. Jay Leno said to me on this podcast, if you have an hour of material, uh-huh. you have six minutes for corporate because you have to be G-rated. Uh, of course. It's yeah. very, very wealthy, fancy uh, yeah. group of people. So I always have to do G-rated shows for these corporations. Then you dive back into the comedy club. I'd sure like to hear some of that non-G-rated. Non-G-rated? Yeah. Mm. Well, well, 15 minutes of it is about your show. And it's non-G-rated. Well, there's people getting murdered. And well, oh. I swear a lot in my everyday life. Being, Do you? Well, really, you sound surprised. Being uh, from the East Coast, it's very... Uh, fuck is why would of, that make Fuck difference? is more of a comma. Uh, I suppose it is. You say, yeah. Keith, fucking... That's yeah, where the comma sure, would go. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, true. But yeah, no, I'll, well, next time I'm down in uh, Irvine or Brea, uh, down, uh, you know, if you're down uh-huh. your neck of the... I don't want to give away your uh, secret. Uh, you live in the side of a volcano, as we all know. That's true. Like yeah. a Bond villain. Inside the volcano. Inside. Yeah. Have you ever been offered uh, acting roles, Keith Morrison? Uh, well, uh, sort of. But I don't think I'd do that. What do you mean, sort of? Everything's tabled and couched. You're so. Yeah. What, what do you mean, sort of? Well, just a little bit. Walk on things, you know? Yeah, sure. Like on. Oh, on you were on Seinfeld. Well, right? there was that, but yeah, that yeah, you said playing Kramer a was a serial thing, yeah. killer. You know that was uh, that was quite a lot of fun, and that was I was in between contracts one time, and I was at lunch, and I was sort of pissed because they weren't. I, see, I I'm getting there. I'm starting to move Don't toward let that. Let it fly, sister. <laughs> let it fly, anyway, sister. I was sort of pissed that they hadn't offered me uh, the next deal yet. I was just getting frustrated. It's uh, the NBC and, way I, from my Saturday Night Live experiences. Well, that could be so. Let them wait. Anyway, uh, the phone rings, and it's Seinfeld saying, do you want to do a little shtick on the show? We're taping uh, today, and. Uh, <laughs> And there's a, you know, a bit for a reporter, and I wondered whether you, you might like to do it. Well, like, yes. <laughs> so I went down to the studio on my lunch hour. I was there for maybe 20 minutes. Wait, and that's it? Yeah, and Seinfeld was there, and he was very gracious, and the rest of them weren't, you know, but he, he was there, and uh, he asked me if I wanted a sandwich on the way out, and no, I, I, I you know, wanted to get back to work. But that was that. Forgot all about it. I've had a check from them every month for the last, like, how long? It's almost 30 years now. It's amazing when those residual checks keep coming. Eventually, they get down to literally six cents. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Like, they're accounting. It's like, you know what? But they still arrive. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. like, I'm going to be okay. I know you guys have to keep your books in order, but maybe mm-hmm. round down, keep the six cents, put it in your pocket, because yeah, I opened oh, an envelope yeah. all excited, and it said 00.06. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe if you're going to move the zeros and the decimal point around, I could get fired up over it. Yeah. But I get excited, though, when the check comes, even if it's the six, six cents. cents. Yeah. <clears throat> Which it usually is. Uh, so you, um, we were talking about energies and stuff, and you seem to, uh, my my vibe off of you when I brought up reading uh. people's energies and frequencies, you seem to be a little, my my interpretation of you, of what I'm reading from you, you seem to be a little more uh, cut and dry, black and white, maybe not so much into the... Uh, the do 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 yeah. Do you think everything happens for a reason? No. Do you believe in an afterlife? Oh, come on. Why do you ask questions like that? Why, this is what You're I trying to pin fr- me down. This is what I would ask my friends. If I say that I don't believe in an afterlife... Then you'd be like many, many, many Americans. Yes, well, in fact... I How don't. about you're just a happy agnostic? I don't know if there's an yeah. afterlife. Yeah, pretty much. You don't have to put your yeah. foot down and say there is not one. Well, I wouldn't know now, would I? Well, I don't, if anybody would know, it would be you. All you do is talk to people that just murdered people. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? You, you're right next to the doorman. Been murdered. I don't get right, to talk you, to them. You're, you're next to the man who's next to the man. Yeah, who, who used that. to be the man. Who used to be the man? Yeah. 
Um, I don't think so. I just don't think so. And it's okay. My grandfather didn't think so right. either. And it, when I, I interviewed him. Is he dead? Uh, yeah, a while. My hero, uh -huh. Maurice Ferguson. And uh, the kindest man I ever met. And I asked yeah. him if he believed in an afterlife. And he said, no. God, Mabel, stop. I said, sorry, I'm yelling at my dog. Uh, Did you just kick your dog? No, I waved her away. Okay. And Maybe. he said, uh, you step on a bug, it's over. There's no, like, uh -huh. you can tell me there's a bunch of ants and stuff and right. all that. And I, uh, it surprised me. His answer. Yeah, you want Mabel to snuff. She <laughs> makes, like, pig noises. You want her to do it into the mic. You're yeah, smart. Yeah, all right, so Gorbachev blew your mind. Yeah, but I don't think there's an afterlife in spite of that. Well, that's fine. I don't think Gorbachev and afterlife are really... Mm. I, I bet he right now wishes there was an afterlife because he's no longer with us. No comment. All right. I'll fill in the pauses. Fine. It's what I do for a living. Yeah, fine. Uh, <laughs> you've got a lot of those tonight. Yeah. Politician you've interviewed uh -huh. that you thought, wow, this guy's like an actual crazy person. Oh, boy. Um... Now then, see, I have to, I have to name a name, right? Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, because some of them are still around and they get mad at you. You know, I mean, if you express a, an opinion, how about somebody you're not supposed no to express around. opinions James because it means Polk. you're real nut when I spoke to him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have been around about that. One. I was yeah. I was on Vancouver local yeah. news and Polk came through <laughs> town after they finished the railroad. Yeah. Uh, nobody that's not around anymore that you can. Well, you know, I mean, come on. If you if you want to get to a position of some authority, it's unusual to be a complete nut job. Although it does happen. In America from time to time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. Mm, yeah. You're sitting down with men that have been accused, and I'm using, I'm generalizing, of course. Right. There has to be a mechanism in your head where you realize, oh, that's the sentence, he did it. Or is it like, uh, is it something in your head that you have to erase and complete, have complete objectivity start to finish and wait till you go home? Uh, you know, I'm really bad at telling when people are, are lying. Um, I could, really? I, yeah. think the, I think the listeners watch TV and go, oh my God, he's lying. Yeah, they do. But I don't see it. I'll believe somebody. They tell me a story. I think, oh, really? I, I, I just believe it, you know, a lot of the time. I mean, sometimes it's just there too ha obvious. There has to be. But so then, yeah, afterwards, you sit and you think about it for a bit. And it. Do you ever regret the uh, the way you went about it in hindsight? Like all the time. Uh, like I was way too nice to that guy. He's a he's a, he's a yeah. cold blooded murderer. Right. And I, I, and I used to worry about that a lot. But actually, being nice to cold blooded murderers is is is, is a, a good strategy. You feed I into their discovered. psychopath. Yeah. Uh, brain. That's very right. smart. It doesn't really matter after the fact when you put a story together. You don't have to sort of jump down somebody's throat or accuse them of something or be the, uh, you know, the, the journalist who's going to find truth. You just have to let them tell their story and then compare it to the facts. It's very interesting you say that. So you, because there used to be a guy, it was a black guy that did it, a light-skinned black young guy, and I forget his name, but he impressed my wife and I because he was almost argumentative, like, oh, come on, you couldn't uh -huh. possibly. Do you know who I'm talking about? I forget his name. He had the job. He yeah. used to interview. It was Mankiewicz, yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. You don't know who I'm talking about? No. Oh, Not a clue. But he's gone. I don't see him Okay, anymore. fine. Oh, boy. No, I don't know who you're talking about. I oh, really, really don't. don't? Not a clue. He was no. like a young brother, and he used to really go like, you yeah. can't possibly believe that uh. anybody would think. Um, but so you go in, and you're completely uh, uh, objective in, when you sit across from somebody. The fact that the guy has uh, shackles around his feet, and they had to handcuff him to a chair uh -huh. to talk to you, yeah. that doesn't taint your uh, vision of the fact that maybe, or well, maybe he's got a swastika you know, somebody, tattooed oops, to his eye. Just spilled oh, don't don't worry about it. What do you mean, don't worry about it? That's a nice table. It's believe. fine, Keith. Uh, We've had degenerates in here. We've really? had lead singers. We've had Bootsy <laughs> Collins farted in this room. Don't worry about really? it. Really? What was oh. that like? Oh, he brought the bass. Whoa. It's a Bootsy Collins one. Yeah. You, so you you don't sit across from somebody and I, I find... No, no, here's what happens. I sit across from somebody who's got, you know, shackles on and, and who I know is a, a, a murderer, a multi-murderer even. And I tend to want to... I, I, I I can't help it. I, 
I sort of want to think that maybe uh, that person was misunderstood or something. And you kind of but misunderstood, but still having committed the murders. Oh, of course, yes. Or yes. misunderstood and no. not guilty. Well, it depends. I'm. I, I, I want to try to believe people if they tell me they're not guilty, even if I know they are. I want to try to live in their story as much as I can. Not, you know, fight well, against that, it well, and yeah. tell them that they're full of shit all the time, but right. just to try to live in their experience of it. I don't well, know why, and it doesn't days. matter. But no, but I mean, that speaks to your days of being a, a very good reporter. you got to be yeah. in the moment and be in that person's... Yeah, you want to you want to understand what they're saying so you can uh, express what they say, but then, you know, you know, the truth is something different. In a way, Keith, it sounds like uh, acting. Uh, not acting like you're putting on a show, but you have to be present and you have to be a very good listener. It's being a good listener, I think. To be I completely think, yeah. present, to be fully right. engaged with that person, to make it where at me as a viewer watching you sitting across from this person, that's why I'm uh, completely enthralled by the discussion. Ah, well, I'm glad to hear that. How many times have you sat across? Uh, look, I, I realize I've asked you six questions where there's a numerical answer, and it's... it's, uh, it's and I never give of, you one. Do sort I, of, I, I no, you said thousands and one or Which two. Which is probably a lie, by the way. Uh, I knew it was a lie. Yeah, but uh, you just kept repeating I mean, it. You're yeah. Saskatchewan guys, you never, you know, no, they're hard right. to trust. Gordy Howe used to lie all the time. All the time? Yeah. Um, has there been... there? If I had your job... Uh-huh. Okay. There would have to be somebody I spoke to that I knew didn't do it. There's been episodes. There was that kid, I think he was in Costa Rica or somewhere in Central America. Yeah. He was accused of killing his Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Nicaragua. Girl, yeah. Nicaragua. And he was in Nicaragua in jail. The judge threw everything out. The cell phone towers proved right. that he wasn't even sure. where he was. Yeah. His alibi was beyond there tight. And the Absolutely. judge just said, I don't want to hear it. And the whole show you go, I mean, the show actually concluded there was no ambiguity. It was this poor guy stuck in this Nicaraguan yeah. jail. Yeah. So you left there knowing that there's oh, yeah. an innocent man in this horrible... Uh, but that happens here all the time. Or, that's all the time is maybe a stretch, but a lot. Often. More than it should. Right. So yeah. do you then feel like... Uh, do you contact like? Uh, do you contact Amnesty? Like, what What can you do? <laughs> or, or I mean, how do you... Well, you put it on television. But how do you personally leave that behind you? Well, I, I don't. Would, I that's, would, uh, now you hit on the one I can't leave behind me because there are around this country... The, the guy in the Nicaraguan jail got out. He's at home, thank God. But um, there are in this country right now hundreds of people, most of them men, but some women too, who are in prison for life, uh, convicted of murder, who didn't do it. And I know they didn't do it, and they know they didn't do it, and, and many of the authorities know they didn't do it. But the system is so... I was going to use the word rigged. It, that's the wrong word. But the system is structured in such a way that it's practically impossible to get them out, to make... To make uh, to make justice realize that that they've got an innocent person in there who needs to be released, and prosecutors will fight back against those things tooth and claw. Many of them makes them look like they're in conflict. Well, and then they worry that maybe they're going to get sued, and, and maybe yeah, they won't get elected to sheriff. Or uh, you know, there you go. But you know, uh, my heart really bleeds for these people. I can't imagine what it would be like. To be in prison, one guy up in Montana, he's been there for 30, over 30 years uh, for a murder he didn't commit. And it was, it, How do you know it was proved to the satisfaction of a, of a Montana judge a couple years ago that he didn't do it. Uh, well, because you live in their story enough and you're able to check things out enough, okay. you, you know. Like the Nicaraguan so, guy. Yeah. Okay. So he was released. And he went out to live in Billings. He was there for about a year and a half. Uh, he got himself a house. He got a job. He, be, you know, he eventually had five guys working for him. He, he was living an exemplary life. 30 years? He'd been, he yeah. He, at that time, he'd been in for 28. Oh, my word. So he becomes an upstanding citizen. The mayor of Billings is one of his best friends and biggest supporters. Um, he's well known around town. He's like a politician walking through town. Well... The state appealed this ruling that released him, and they won the appeal in the Montana Supreme Court, a Supreme Court which, by the way, most of the members of which are appointed by the guy who was the prosecutor when this guy was convicted who went on to become the governor a couple of times, etc. Yeah. So, implying nothing, but that was the situation. They appeal, they win the appeal, 
Uh, and our friend gets a notice that he has to be at the sheriff's office in an hour because he's going back to prison for the rest of his life right now. And he's there as we speak. Drives me bullshit. Drives me crazy to think about him and quite a few other people I know personally, I've talked to for hours and hours. Do you ever we're in feel, that very situation. I mean, do you do you write these people letters? I mean, do you do you, do you go, hey, sorry? I mean, what? It seems so ephemeral. Just the word sorry, and I can't believe what no, you're you, going through. Yeah, they, but, they are ephemeral words at that point. But do you? Uh, I, I, you keep track, and you keep finding out what. There are a lot of Innocence Project type legal right. uh, well, you work organizations. For a giant conglomeration. I mean, yeah. NBC and Universal. Uh, and everybody's. It's this right. huge conglomeration. I would think. Uh, I'm not putting the screws to NBC by any means. They've been very good to me over the years. But you would think, if you know somebody's innocent like that cat, yeah, you're talking about. Well, they let me put the story on television, which is that's that's the power that NBC has, and it and it's a significant amount of power. I think. I mean, it certainly makes people aware of these things. Um, but it's just really hard. Uh, there, there are. You, you think of lawyers as people who are money grubbing individuals who are trying to get as much money as they possibly can and represent. You know, suing some company to make a lot of money. And trial lawyers are often portrayed as um, um, not necessarily the most upstanding people. But um, there are many, many attorneys around the country who are working to try to find justice for people who are accused of things who didn't do them, who work for peanuts or nothing. I mean, they, they will, there are whole, there are hordes of attorneys who are making twenty twenty five thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars a year. It's amazing. You know, we're representing these cases that they may never, ever win, you know? It's, I brought up the book um, Psychopath Test by John Ronson earlier, and one of the essays he has was there was a guy in England that faked being insane to avoid jail. Uh huh. Then once, then they, and he won. He well, he was sent to an insane asylum right. in England. Uh, then all the evidence came out. Years passed. Turns out he's completely innocent. Now all you got to do is spring him from the mental <laughs> hospital. Now that's really hard. Impo- he's to, yeah. he'll, he's going to yeah. die there yeah. because one day he wakes up happy because somebody's coming to see him. They write down, well, he's manic today. Yep. And then he gets angry and they say he's bipolar. And then John Ronson, the, uh, the author, just kept visiting this guy over like months and months and months. And then right. it got to the point where John Ronson was going, maybe he is fucking crazy. Now I'm confused because he yep. kept reading the files every day and every day there was an update on this guy yeah. so getting out of a jail it's um very hard it's a tough hustle damien eccles was on this podcast it was awfully and i mean that awfully famous because of the west memphis three yeah trial 18 years uh 17 days on death row and he walked into my hotel room he'd been out for a couple weeks and 18 years on death row. He walked yeah. into my hotel room. We shook hands. His lovely wife, Lori, was there. He walked and looked out the window of the St. Regis Hotel, and he went, wow, what a view. And I realized I had been in that hotel room for eight days. And you hadn't yeah. looked at it? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's right. First thing he did, looked out a window. And it was like, it was a view of like Lexington, just like car. It was <laughs> nothing. It wasn't like the Statue of Liberty lit up red, white, and blue. Right, sure. What if, just a window these yeah. people are deprived yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. So that's got to be hard. I, I I don't know if I have the uh, the mental stamina or the metal that you have to, uh, no, it's to not. put that behind you. Yeah, that is not me, but the, these people, I don't know. Well, I mean, you do yeah. the stories, and you know the person. Right. And then you right. go home, and your wife says, how was work? And you go, well, kind of awful, because I know the guy didn't sure. do it, and he's going to rot in jail for the rest of his life. Right. And some of them some of them confessed, of course. And that's the really tricky one, because you're, you're talk, you ask somebody, well, why, why, did, why did you confess? And, and it's always the same story, because they were in a little room, and there was a certain technique that was used to try to wear them down, and eventually they would say anything they had to say to get out of that room. And always an escape hatch was offered. If you just sort of confess, maybe you were there, or something. They, there was a little wedge uh, to which you can say, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Will you let me go home to my mommy now? And of course they wouldn't, and, because that's the trick. Um, and then, but once the confession occurred, there are very few uh, 
Supreme Courts anywhere that'll let somebody out of prison if they've already confessed, whether I mean, they did it or not. Yeah, I, w- I would assume so. That's tough to. Yeah. Walk so we back. go back and we look at the tapes, if there are any, of their of their confessions, of their interrogations, and you see where uh, they they were bogus from the start, and uh, they were frightened, and they were led to say what they said, and they were almost dictated their confessions, and usually they're young people who weren't the brightest. Um, and that's a fascinating part of this job. That's what sticks with me more than anything, that kind of stuff. And we know in this country, and I'm not speaking for Keith, I'm speaking for myself, and I'm realizing as we go, uh, you're a very important newsman, and as I wade into, no, I'm being serious, and as we wade into politics, uh, you things uh, you say, can it will be used against you. Uh, I'm not, I won't even ask red, blue state, and, you know, libertarian, that's uh, your business, and I don't want anybody to uh, have an opinion of you other than the Right. Uh, great mm-hmm. work that you bring forth, and we know that in our country, it's societal. It's a it's a it's a money game. The courts and the right. people that are poor get yeah. put away at a much uh, more alarming rate than the people that are wealthy. Indeed, yeah. And uh, that seems to I don't really see that ever changing. And but what's strange about your show, in a good way, Dateline Fridays, mm. eight o'clock, seven central, Keith. That's when it's on. At Dateline underscore Keith. You better tweet the hell out of Keith Morris and make him happy because he is a good Twitter <laughs> follow. He's fun. I should look um, that up now. Is yeah. the people on Dateline? It's uh, it's always it's almost like an episode of Columbo. Everybody's like sort of wealthy. Mm-hmm. There's never, it's never that lower. Like you know what, this is, a, and that's a weakness, <clears throat> I got to confess. I'll be a little self-criticism here. We, you know, we pick stories where the characters are people you can identify with or would want to identify with. There are lots of low lives who get involved in these terrible scrapes, and sometimes they're complicated stories like the ones we like to do, but if they really are forgive me, somewhat disgusting people, you tend not to do the story because people aren't going to want to watch it. Your shows have like mayors, sheriffs, you know, yeah. retired judges, man about town, yes. you know, a guy owned... Men of God, my favorite. Men of God, yeah. guy who owned eight restaurants, the most po- the most famous man in uh, Cold Lake, Alberta. Everybody knew Joe yep. in Cold Lake, you Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your favorite crime shows to watch or do you stay away from the medium entirely because you're so sick and tired of it? You just like to watch reruns of like uh, Sanford and Son. <laughs> I love those uh, series on HBO and things. You know, these uh, the like Game of Thrones and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, period stuff. Yeah, well, and, or and new like the new Homeland stuff is good. Have you watched that lately? I watched the first season of Homeland. It 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 dropped off a little. It's gotten pretty interesting. I didn't again. have an affinity for the lead male. Uh huh. And I thought Claire Danes was great, and Mandy Patinkin I'll follow into the center of the sun. Right. Uh, but I really just something about the lead male. Yeah. I just didn't care. He's. I think he's gone back. To he's British gone now. He was. Yeah. He was like executed yeah. or something in season mm. two. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been to Medieval Times, the restaurant? Oh, I thought you were going to ask you if I was that old, but uh, <laughs> no. Sir. Yes, I have. I know how old you are. I have. You're on the internet. Yeah, There's all a whole true. bunch of stories it, about it's you. It's terrible. How the much nude photos I thought were going to be alarming. Yep. I thought they're <laughs> endearing, actually. I mean, the fact yeah. that you were holding true. bunnies that was cute. Yeah, that was good. Huh? The nude photo. Keith, like just look up Keith uh, Morris and nude photos. You'll uh-huh. be thoroughly impressed. Right. And by the way, sir, well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to the restaurant Medieval Times? I have. Yes. It's fun, right? What do you got going here? Nothing. I'm oh, just okay. going just... To, yeah, it is I'm, kind of fun. You know? I'm like, you, yeah. now I'm like uh, right. you right. speaking to a politician. I'm trying to All pull right. you off All your right. speaking points here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So your your crime shows, not really. You're more into like the uh, the procedural dramas. It, you know... And the fun. But I read a lot, of, is I read a lot of crime novels. Really? Uh, yeah, who done that? Uh, Agatha Christie is uh, one of the great women of literature, in my view, even though people wouldn't call it literature possibly, but I do because I love it. She invented the uh, the genre, 
and uh, and it's even now the template for true crime reporting. Oh, is that so? Yeah. If a story is, the more it is like a an Agatha Christie story, the more likely it is that it's going to be a success on our show. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And she's got like 50, 60 novels. She just never stopped. Well. Now you right. get these guys like Patterson and... Uh, Same Clark, deal. They just keep they going like, and going but and they going. they have a stat. They're like Andy Warhol in the factory. They just well, get people true. up off the streets to write their books for them. Yeah. You may be writing one. I don't know. Are you? No. No. I can only write about myself because I'm a, I'm a narcissist. Ah, yes. Psychopath. Okay. Yeah. See that right there? Yeah. Have you done enough shows... Uh-huh. I said that like Norm MacDonald. Uh, have you done enough shows? You did. Kind of, yeah, yeah, Keith Morrison, you know, uh, <laughs> where you yourself uh-huh. could get away with murder. I think so. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you... Do you are, uh, There's a technique. I won't say what it is. John Sally, uh, former basketball great, uh-huh. uh, told me uh, his, uh, his his whole family are uh, homicide detectives, and they said the average murder there's 27 mistakes. He said if you knock that yeah. number down to 10, you can walk. Exactly. Really? I think he's John got Sally it. John Sally was right. I think so. Spider, my man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. I always just thought if you're going to approach, you'd wear different size shoes. Oh no, that's uh, like I would squeeze my no, feet. No, no, they all like, do that. No, no, no. What do you mean don't, they all do don't that? even think about doing that. No, well, it I'm never not going to think about murdering anybody. It never works. What do you mean it never works? They always go. They always the match the tread shoes. of the tire. They match the tread of the shoe. But if the shoe is a different size, I mean, <laughs> go on, tell me. They always catch that. They always catch that. They always catch the fake burglary. They always catch, you name it. They catch most things. But there are some things they don't catch. And you can't say them on air. I wouldn't want to. No. Oh, I don't want to encourage any bad behavior. No, okay. But yeah. you tell me off, Mike. That sounded creepy. Like, I want to What, you want to kill your wife or something? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the only reason I'm alive is that beautiful redhead up there. Yeah. Um, what amazes me on the show is when people, it's always, you know, uh, in the movie, oh, shoot, the Spike Lee movie with Denzel and Clive Owen. It was a great bank robbery movie. I forget, but the number one reason people rob banks, uh-huh. uh, mortgage. The number two reason, mortgage. Uh-huh. And they go on and on, and they yes, just do it like sure. eight times until yeah. they beat a dead horse. Uh, but people murder murder a lot for the life insurance but what amazes me on your what? show uh, is that sometimes the life insurance is like forty thousand i know it's like, i know if you're gonna whack somebody get three mil get that check from seinfeld you would think yes yeah why was it three million that check from seinfeld no, no i'm just saying get a good yeah. life insurance but i appreciate no that. yeah appreciate you would that. you would but they couldn't get the good life insurance because you know in many cases they just you know what 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 insurance company would want to give them a huge insurance policy when they're making fifteen thousand a year you know if you weren't doing this living in a, a living, trailer park yeah a lot of trails not yeah it's it's a tough hustle mm. if i had my life insurance done and i realized i'm worth much more dead than alive that was a depressing day in my life keith they mm. came to my house they drew my blood yeah. i laid on my own couch with an EKG. It was very relaxing. How much is your life insurance? Policy? I'm not going to tell you on this. If you're not going to tell, if you're going to hold back, I'm going to hold back. I'm not holding back. What do you mean you're not going to hold? You? I don't have a life you insurance. You're going to tell me a politician policy. that was a batshit crazy politician, like a person you went, how does this person ever get elected? He's an actual crazy person. You wouldn't even give me a name of somebody deceased. No, I wouldn't. All right. Yeah. Strom Thurmond, but listen. Yeah. Um, if you weren't doing this for a living, you, ah. you strike this how I this how I see Keith Morrison. If he never got into the news business, you strike me as a man of leisure who uh, leisure. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Sailboat and a giant book like a tome, like oh, really? a, a giant book out on a, a nice. Uh, you mean sailboat. reading it or, or writing it? Reading it. Reading it. Just yeah. a guy just that sitting around reading. Sail yeah. in, a, in sail. a Marina del Rey. Sail just uh-huh. relaxing. If you couldn't do what you're doing for a living now, yeah. what's like, like me? I would love to coach wrestling. You look like a wrestler. I did. I wrestled yeah. uh, for a very long time. Wow. Uh, so if I could teach uh, children wrestling, and especially the mental game, like that. But well, why don't you do that? Well, it's a bit of a pay cut, Keith. <laughs> it's a bit of a what? Pay cut. Oh. From show business. Yeah, but you could still get the guys to you know uh, buy things on Amazon through your wrestling But I don't see that movie. And money, that all goes to my kid's college. But I appreciate you bringing up the, the you know, Amazon you, You've banner, said that man. one time too often. I'm not sure I believe you. Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's when I get <laughs> handcuffed for lying to my listeners. Right. Which won't happen, because it's true. What mm. is your job? If you, if you never were uh, a newsman, when you were a little boy, you wanted to do what? 
I wanted to be a preacher like my daddy. Um, really? Yeah. And, uh, and I, then I wanted to be a lawyer, and then I wanted to be a politician, uh, things like that. What, what about uh, you? A uh, wrestler, wrestling coach. Yeah. Wrestling coach. When I was when I was like a preteen, I wanted to either be a marine or a pro wrestler, but uh-huh. I wrestled at 105 pounds, and uh, I have bunions and I'm flat-footed. Mm. Probably not a good uh, no, panic no. attacks. Not a good yeah. marine. I'm yeah. not a guy you want in the foxhole. Mm. But, panic attacks. Yeah, huh? treatable, easy. Anybody out there with panic disorder, please go see a doctor. It's a neurological glitch. It's just yeah. like having bronchitis. If if you had asthma, they'd give you an inhaler. Yeah. And you wouldn't go, what's wrong with me? Well, I'm not a man. See, here's what's really good about a show like yours and about shows like this is that you can say things like that now where, honestly, 20 years ago, just what you just said would be an extremely difficult thing to get out there to the wider world. And that's a very important message you just delivered. And well, you just did it that's like that. What I like about no podcasting, problem. too, is it's appointment listening. People listening to this yeah. uh, every Monday, they have the app on their phone, the More Stories app, uh-huh. which is free. And it's a uh, podcast. If, if, even if you don't listen to this podcast, if you're just a first time through, if you're listening just because Keith is on, go download someone's podcast because it's a point. You will never mind traffic ever again because huh. you, they're listening to you and I speak. You know, there's some guy in Boston right now stuck in the Ted Williams tunnel. And he's he going crazy. No, he doesn't gonna, care because oh. he's listening to us. Oh, I mean, and we're scintillating and excited. It, yeah, a Led Zeppelin yeah. song stops after three minutes. We've been talking over an hour, and it's it's. Have fun. we really? Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, this is the new medium, Keith. Yeah. You bump like three minutes of commercials in the middle to cover your nut. This 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 empty air in this garage costs a lot of money. I still can't get past the Amazon thing. What, <laughs> what uh, nomination was your father's? Uh, he was a preacher. Well, I was up in Canada. You see, the, so they had this United Church of Canada, which was a. Uh, Protestant, I don't know anything about Protestant this. church. I didn't know there it's was. It's like a, the uh, a Presbyterian or something like that. Yeah. You know? But I didn't even know there was a United Church of Canada. That fast. So oh, really? You guys even socialized religion. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think if you see your dad up on the uh, up on the pulpit there yeah. giving a, a powerful sermon. And well, he that, was that, great. That, he was like your granddad, the, the, the kindest man I ever met. Wonderful, wow. wonderful of man. Of course you aspired to do something like that. Yeah, well, for, for a minute. And then, and then, lawyer, I, and then I realized... There's no heaven. You know, we're not going anywhere. It's so. show business, too. Yeah. Well, there's that, yeah. You, you got to put on a hell. You got to be a front man. You can't be a you bassist gotta, yeah, in the band. True. You got to be Jim Morrison to get that collection mm. plate filled. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And you could tell. Um, a lawyer is a strange job. Only job that you bring, uh, you go home and you have to do homework. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, no, that'd be a terrible thing to do. You go home, Awful. your wife's got dinner on the table, yeah. and you're like, hold on, I need two more hours to go through yeah, all these briefs. Yeah, I know. I know. I got kicked out of law school, actually. I was, go on. No, it's true. I, it was in Saskatchewan, middle of the winter. Moose Jaw? You know they have, no, Sask- Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Oh, that's my next guest. <laughs> um, where there are two seasons, winter and July. <laughs> and um, so it was winter, and I was kicked out of law school, and... Um, and um, one of my uh, uh, neighbors was uh, the editor of the local newspaper. And uh, he needed somebody to drive him to work, and I had a car. And so, you know. So I don't know what happened. So I got into the media business. Oh, you, yeah. didn't, you, didn't, uh, you left that part he out. He approached please. me when I, I was plugging my car in because it was cold. It was wintertime. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and, and he, you know, offered me the job driving him to work because he couldn't drive. A lot of comics get jobs that way. When I was coming up in stand-up yeah. comedy, uh-huh. I lived in New Jersey. I had a car at like 18 years old. The headliners all live in Manhattan, no cars. Uh-huh. So you would have a job opening for a headliner. You'd have to take them up to like Albany, New York. You'd get 100 bucks. You'd have to drop them off in Manhattan. You'd wind up losing money, tax tolls, all that yeah. business. But you did it enough times that the club would eventually go, when are you available to come up? So that was the game. You just kept driving into Manhattan. Did it actually work? I guess it did. Here I am, 29 years later, stand-up comedy. Whoa. You see my uh, special. You know what? Your wife may enjoy uh, and yourself. My uh, Netflix special is called Funny for a Girl. It was on Showtime, and now it's on Netflix. It's free. You really? You go home and just have a few laughs, and you can text uh. me if you liked it or not. Okay. And I have uh, another one coming out in, uh, next year called Happy and a Lot. Happy and a Lot? 
Now, why would you call it that? Every day when That's I pick a ridiculous my son thing. up, I'll tell you why, and then okay. you're gonna go, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. My not. son, I pick him up every day from preschool, uh-huh. right? And they yeah. give little preschool report cards every day, and it says mood, and every day the teacher writes happy, and it uh-huh. says lunch, and they check the box of the eight, and they write a lot <laughs> every day, happy and a lot. That's my little there guy upstairs. And if anything describes me, I'm a lot. I've I'm noticed. happy, and I'm happy noticed. a lot, nope. but I'm also a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm very alpha. Yeah, uh, kind of. And I wish I wasn't uh, to uh. the point where I used to pray to strip me of some of this alphaness. Yeah. I used to write on my bedroom door in high school, don't talk. But you do. It's endlessly incapable of shutting up. Yeah. But it's been my sole well, source. Uh, of uh, thank God for that, because, you know, you're Corey, keeping this whole thing going here. Poor Corey. <laughs> uh, uh, you pulled your weight, my friend. Uh, and we're going to talk uh, when we put down these mics. You can tell me all the secrets about politicians that were as nutty uh, as uh, I think. Uh, uh, Please. Off mic. Well, sure. Not now. When Fine. we're done. Fine. Yeah. When, when we we're done. Phone yeah. Numbers and yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact okay. remains, Dateline. I don't think you realize it's a social phenomenon. Well, I'm glad. It's I true. Am. I'm glad. But I think you downplayed a little bit, and either you uh, have a great poker face. I'm, no, I'm terrified of hubris. Is what it is. I'm terrified. Of I hu- knock on wood everywhere I go. Of hubris. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Because okay. you know, you, the minute you decide a thing is working, uh, it stops. So it's, I do believe in magic. Well, why don't you murder Mankiewicz? <laughs> I thought about it frequently. And then you'd be the go-to guy all the time for all yeah, the murders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Keith yeah. Morrison. I actually have a plan in motion now to murder Mankiewicz, but he doesn't know about it, so don't tell him. Well, make sure he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> well, make sure the publicist for Dateline uh, doesn't tell him about takes this? him out to lunch and right. let like a month blow by because a lot of people are a little behind in the podcast because sure, they listen to other things. Yeah, uh-huh. my man. Yeah, uh, this has been a, this. I could talk to you for hours, but I, I, I probably I, said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. Do you think I said? You something? said nothing. You shouldn't have said. I've been I'm, fucking dragging shit out of you, uh-huh. tooth and nail, and you're like, yeah. well, I can't say that. No, I can't say that either. You, you said Prime Minister Trudeau said, "I'm so glad you asked me that, Keith. That was the big barn burner." Uh-huh. Yeah, but the bottom. Line is we get the message off for Dateline, which is yes, which is eight o'clock on Friday nights, you know. <clears throat> seven o'clock central. And I'm not I, joking. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, but okay, I have a um, uh, uh, two-hour Dateline. We occasionally we get these two-hour blocks. Sometimes, I love the two. Sometimes hours I don't like the two hours, Keith. I feel like you're stretching it out. Well, wow, really? But you're telling me otherwise. This is the one I should keep my eyes open for. I think this is a better two hour than it would be a one hour. Really? Yes. Oh, that's good. I wasn't trying to do you. No, but it was good. Oh. Okay. Uh, so that's the, on the 19th. 19th. No, of December. Of December, yeah. December 19th, two hour dateline. Yeah. With 8 my, o'clock, 7 central. 8 o'clock, 7 central on Friday nights on NBC. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is yours. And it, this is. Right. Can you tell us, give us a little teaser? Well, yes, it's Who? about it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a question of whether it's it's a question of whether a person committed suicide or was murdered, and um, it's a cheery topic, right? Yeah. But um, so there are really only two or three players in this situation. It's you would seem like that would be you a would half seem hour like episode, a pretty uh, not exactly a two hour episode. You would think it not a very complicated thing to figure out. Right. Everybody is absolutely blotto tanked. Drunk as skunks, and that adds to the complication. But then, so they have to figure out from whatever blood evidence, etc., is there, whether the guy did it himself or it was done to him. Um, but that gets very interesting and complicated. Yeah, don't give anything away because I don't want the publicist to say, "How could he say that?" Yeah, uh, blood spatter. One of my favorite words. You would yeah. think it would be blood splatter. Well, you could tell them. Why don't you write them a letter or something it's like that? It's spatter. It is spatter, yeah. But it makes so much sense splatter. if it was blood. It doesn't splatter. Like, oh, I splattered that all over the place. Yeah, I know. You never go, oh, i sorry about my spatter. Well, maybe yeah, yeah, it's a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. but, but yeah. I know all the time. Ta- well, if I try to use that, do you think that? Uh, I, don't, and, uh, I don't want you to I'll change d- a damn thing because you're perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're perfect. You're Absolutely. perfect. Absolutely. The totally. way I need you, yeah, the yeah. way I have you. You're trying you. to turn me into a narcissist. That's what's going on. No, I'm, I'm a fan. Believe me. <laughs> you wouldn't be here. I, I don't interview anybody I don't give a shit about. This well, is. It's, I, look at the wall behind you. you I know. Charlie Sheen, David Lee Roth. Look at all these narcissists. <laughs> good God. Wayne Kramer. 
Kramer from the MC5, Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction, Mark Henry, the actual world's strongest man, Duck wow. McCake and Guns N' Roses, Anthony Jeselnik, great comic, Look at Jim that. Jeffries, I'm ready. Uh, Eric Roberts, uh, uh, Mangello from uh, True Blood. You know, look at this wall. I is your dog as nice to all of them as she is to me? Uh, she wanted to get away from Anthony Jeselnik at all costs. Really? Yeah, yeah, she feared. There's a photo. She's in. Yeah. She's one of the only ones in the actual photo. Uh, I know you know the tells of people that are guilty. Here's the one I picked uh-huh. up on, and we'll uh, we're rounding third here. All right, we'll, good. We'll touch home. Um, anyone that has actual mur- actually murdered their wife seems yep. incapable of giving a single syllable answer. Like I have not murdered my wife, right? Right. You know this as a fact. I haven't seen your wife. Well, though. we all right for all intents and purposes. Okay, fine. Okay, I got an alibi now. This is good. No. <laughs> Ask me if I've murdered my wife. Have you murdered your wife? No. Now, make believe I have murdered my wife. Same right. question. Did you murder your wife? Absolutely not. Mm. I could never. They just. This is. They, a, this, that's, that's you've never noticed that. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Actually, I have. Yeah. They get very inventive and creative. I absolutely. I couldn't even hurt a fly. And it's mostly people with the kind of narcissistic personality who, uh, you know, they feel they're kind of brighter, the brightest person in the room. They always do, right? And, yeah, so they want to sort of put one over on you, and, and uh, they be lied to take their test so they can beat you, too, and it, it becomes that kind of a challenge. And that's when they get themselves into trouble. But as you say, too much explanation. Not at all. I, there was one where the guy said, no, not at all. Yeah. There's a Long Island guy. Yeah. Did you murder your wife? No, not at all. <laughs> and you're like, not even a little bit? <laughs> if I right. gave you a week to interview anybody, we uh-huh. could just tell this person for a week. I know there's probably mm. a dozen people in your mind that rattle around. No, not a soul. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's somebody like if you had all access week and you could their guard came down, you just really get inside their head. I not a murderer, think, just a, a Yeah, just a, just to somebody. You know, I don't think about those things. It'd be great if you're like Henry Winkler. Hmm. <laughs> just some random celebrity. Yeah. Who's been on the podcast, by the way. Really? Oh, he's the best. Yeah. Not like, a, I, I, not like uh, Dalai Lama, not like no, world leaders. Uh, not, uh, Henry Winkler has been on this podcast? Yes. You talked to him? He sat here? He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Oh, the table was yeah. set up this way when he was here. God almighty, yeah. It's good at doing visual lucky cues man. for uh, an you oral, talked to all these, oral uh, See, you've got the, uh, the dream job. This is the ultimate thing. You get to talk to all these really interesting yes. people. By and a, for as long as you want. appointment, right? people I want to talk to as well. Uh-huh. You get stuck talking to people that they, they send you to talk to. Well, that's very true. So there's nobody. Now I feel bad about this. No, there, there's not. A, there's not a person that uh-huh. comes to mind that you go. Oh, well, Is there somebody breaking into nah, your house? Nah, it's just the, no, the door. My okay. wife uh, opened the closet door. Right, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about those mysterious noises, Keith. Everything's okay. fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's that's not blood. It's a Pollock. I bought oh, okay, it. Okay, fine. <laughs> that's a Pollock. I bought a Pollock and I hung it yeah. right there. I just took the canvas that's away. Right. Yeah. There's not somebody you you go. I'd like to sit down with this person for. Oh, uh, lots of people. Lots of people. Right. I, people. I, I don't even want to say. But the Dalai Lama. For example, well, I said that uh, earlier, yeah. and you scoffed. Well, you know I was in a scoffing you, mode. I, you can't believe anything I say. You have to understand. Apparently that. not. Yeah. I love the Dalai Lama, like the yeah. world's most enlightened man. And then every once in a while, you catch him in a photo, and he's wearing like a green visor. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to talk to the Pope. I love this Pope. What he's a, Francis. Yeah. He's a cool dude. He's, he's bro, a very. He, cool he actually dude. kissed the feet of prostitutes. He, he just, I know. He's, uh, I, that moves me to that's tears. That's like your book that of Matthew style. That's yeah. very, very New Testament, mellow, calm Christ. Absolutely. I'm down with him too. I like the calm Christ. You're coming. You know, book of Matthew is like, uh, let's all be cool. Uh-huh. It's almost yeah. like Christ is Buddhist. Yeah, kind of. Uh, and. The Buddha. The Buddha would be great. Oh, wait. Is he around anymore? No. Sure. no. Well, does he ever go away? He's in every home in the west side of L.A. There you go. In every yeah. garden. Keith Morrison. The show is Dateline. It's uh, Fridays, 8, 7 Central. Uh, look, man, don't be a stranger. I mean, we're practically neighbors. Yeah, we are, aren't and, we? Yeah. Uh, let's, this is just, I, I really, honestly, I could talk to you for five hours straight, but we both have lives we, we need to get back to. You know, to. everybody lies all the time. But it's been great to talk to you, too. What, do you, what part do you think I lied about? <laughs> Tonight at all. Just give me seriously. <laughs> you said you could talk to me all night long. All right. I embellished. All right. I said I could talk to you for probably five hours. I haven't talked to thousands of murderers either. Hundreds, certainly. Hundreds, yeah. Yeah. I could certainly talk to you for I felt five bad about the thousands the minute I said it, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah you seemed a little uh, overly yeah. sensitive about your uh, your number. Uh, you threw a dart at a number, and you, you were unhappy with where it landed. Yeah, yeah, pretty I much. Think we got the point. You know, you exaggerate right. to clarify. 
Thank and you. when I say I could Thank talk you. to you for five hours, I don't think that's an exaggeration. If we drove to Vegas and we both had We'd to talk the whole time. We pulled over a lot. Yeah. I could talk to you the entire time. Sure. But you could talk to a pillow the entire time. Uh, a lot of times I do. I, you know what's funny? I was doing quotes from the movie Platoon uh-huh. once downstairs yeah. in, here in the house. And my wife upstairs goes, what? And I go, I think it was Tom. I go, I yeah. said, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. Yeah. And she goes, I don't know what that means. And I go, no, it's from the movie Platoon. And she goes, what you, so she goes, you just walk around the house. This is when we were first together. You just say these things like when you're, did you need me to hear it? And I go, no, I just, <laughs> and she really at, like, it's the first time a human being sat across from me and said, so you, like, if, if I wasn't here, huh. you would walk around and say movie quotes uh, out loud. Sure. And I realized, oh my God, yes. That's kind of true. I, you know, I uh, when I uh, uh, did you see the movie The Trip um, and The Trip to Italy? Those two movies that those guys no. did. You didn't see them. The Trip. Yeah. Uh, they all of their names. <laughs> well, fill anyway, me in on it. Um, uh, uh, this is just a trip a couple of guys make, and they're you know doing uh, their imitations of uh, James Bond and so on along the along the way, um, and quips and funny things and just very funny talk. And that's the movie. So it's like a documentary almost. Is that's the movie? Is it a documentary? No, it's a movie. Oh, just yeah. the guys on a trip. Yeah, and they're pretending a few things just to make it like a story, but. You'd be fabulous at that. Keith Morrison, Jay Moore. <laughs> Trip for two. There you go. Let's do it. Buddy Trip comedy. to Vegas. Yeah. Me and you, let's remake Cannonball Run. Me and you will be in a hearse. <laughs> Which one is in the back? Possibly. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I assure you, you well, you it was you said nothing. Really nothing I'll get in trouble for? No. Look at Corey <laughs> vociferously. No, she's saying no to. You really are like it's you know I had Joe Buck on from uh, Fox, yeah. the voice of the uh, World Series and the Super yeah, Bowl, yeah. Okay. and I tried to get him to do a home run call, swearing. Uh huh. Did he I, do it? Like holy shit, that fucking ball is. Cr-. He goes no. Wow. Because his boss is good here. Like same yeah, with you in right. politics and world leaders. You know yeah. they'll show you no. the door like that uh, that prick up in uh, Toronto. I can't, I can't, he's not a prick. What was the name of the guy that fired you in Toronto? I want names. <laughs> I want names. <laughs> yeah. Hope you're happy. Look at Keith now. Yeah, right. What are you doing? Much TV, much music or something up there? Uh, Keith, yeah. that's what he's doing now. Keith Morrison, thanks for coming on the podcast, brother. Thank you. Much love. <laughs> Say something spooky on the way up. Well, um, hmm. What is that Range Rover doing in the driveway? And who's behind the wheel? Keith Morrison, ladies and gentlemen, put your name on it.
When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. Choose Shell V Power Premium Gasoline. It removes an average of 60% of performance robbing gunk on intake valves left by low-quality premium gasolines. And it starts with your very first tank. Choose Shell V Power today and let the excitement begin.